more than three people, sir. But part of marketing is finding out what your audience knows about what you're trying to sell. What is recreational therapy to you? All right, so hang on to that piece of paper. So we'd like to introduce ourselves. All righty, well, I'm going to go ahead and get us started off with the API process. Show of hands, have anyone, anyone ever heard of API, API, anything like that? Okay, okay, so it's, it's a systematic process that a lot of different healthcare professionals follow. API is specific to recreational therapy and it kind of gu guides our treatment. So uh, we use standardized assessments. The PHQ-9 um, is an assessment that helps us test for depression. Um, the PHQ assessment itself tests for many different aspects of emotional well-being and behavioral health, but specifically we can pull sections out of it. It's basically what the PHQ-9 looks like. It is a very short assessment and it is a self-report that is filled out by the individual. We decided in order to like get our point across of kind of what recreational therapy, like how you would do that API process, that we would go ahead and do a skit. Um, so imagine you're at a hospital, we're working uh, inside of a behavioral health unit. Hello Blake and Megan, hope you guys are doing well today. Um, so I've looked at your PHQ-9 forms you filled out before and today I really just want to sit and chat about some of the activities that the two of you might enjoy in your life. I'm thinking about activities that might bring you some joy or some comfort just so that I can learn a little more about you and what you like to do. So. Blake, if you'd like to go first. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> in my personal life, I kind of enjoy doing like a lot of outdoor activities. So kind of like fishing, hunting, hiking, and stuff like that. But recently, I picked up an interest of writing short stories, mainly fictional. Megan? Sure. I, um, I'm, I like yoga and drawing, and I enjoy social media a lot. Excellent. So those are a great list of things to do. Now. I do notice a little bit of a commonality in there. Well, it's not sort of formal journaling, but your short story writing, your drawing, your social media, those are kinds of journaling. So I think journaling is a great activity for people to explore their feelings, and it's something that I want to try with the two of you today. Um, we're going to do it in a more formal setting. So I have a journaling prompt that I would like for you to take some time to give some consideration, write down your thoughts about it, and then when you're done, we'll have a little discussion about it. So the journaling prompt is, what is something you are good at and what makes you good at it? One thing that I, that I used to be good at that I don't really feel anymore um, is I used to take great pride in my schoolwork, but you know now that I've kind of got into senior year, it's kind of dropping down a lot not really fully there anymore so I, I still I still care about it a lot and you know I still want to be there for it fully but it's just nowhere near the same as it used to be so I'm trying to find that balance again so in the past what do you think made you good at your schoolwork I wasn't the best high school student I always drove to you know be better at sports than I did about being good at school and then I got to college and I didn't get on a sports scholarship or anything and so it kind of drove me to be good at my academics and I've just kind of got to the end of it. I'm just ready to go in the real world, so. So would you say when you were really good at the grades, you were like, it was like hard work that yeah. you put into it is what made you good at getting good marks? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. Megan, how about you? Something I'm good at, I always pride myself on being there for my family and friends. And so, why? Like, what is it that drives you to be there for your family and friends? Um, just always like to help others, you know, have empathy towards, you know, everybody and just wanting to make a difference and, you know, I just like to help people. All right. So, if you can take a moment to think about your replies in our discussion, can you see that there are some positive things in what you told me about your personality, about aspects of your life you both see that there's some positive there mm -hmm. great because understanding the positives in our lives that's going to be part of developing um, activities for our future sessions with you guys so we can work towards reaching your therapeutic goals that's sort of part of our API process and so we did that to demonstrate that you know as recreational therapists it's not just about fun and games there's 
professionalism behind it, and there's a reason why we play the fun games that we do. And the biggest thing is meeting someone where they're at with their specific disability and intervening, providing adapted leisure experiences for that individual to reach an overall treatment goal. It has to be goal driven. We're not just going to say, hey, let's do this, uh, you know, and it's, it's like say cards or something or bingo. You know, those aren't necessarily going to reach your goals. It might be enjoyable, it might take your mind off of something or do something else, but it's not the ultimate goal. So some of the things we do to support or we put in our planning activities for people with developmental disabilities, this is specifically about Down syndrome, um, behavioral health assessments, behavioral health intervention strategies. So now, back to your little piece of paper, now what do you think recreational therapy is? So if you could jot that down on your little piece of paper, I would like to collect them. Like, I go to physical therapy mm -hmm. because of my arthritis in my knees. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, well, well I'm, I have always been a big exerciser, and now I'm like totally limited of what I can do. Like, I used to run. I can't run anymore. Sure. And the physical therapist goes, oh, try something different. Um, <laughs> and I mean, he kind of went, well, yeah, running's a bad idea. Have a nice day. I mean, would a rec therapist be someone who might say, let's find activities that you could do physically? A physical therapist, right, is going to help you get out of bed. An occupational therapist is going to give you the tools to get out of bed. And a rec therapist is going to give you a reason to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. 